What's going on? Hello, We're man. on the air, episode two, and we've already. <laughs> We've already started, like, last week we could say, hey, we're not on the air, and, like, we're not used to this. Yeah. But now, I'm still not used here to we it, are. So. This is the Mad Hatter Podcast. Hello, Mad Hatterins. Awesome. My name's Neil. I'm Jamie D. Here we go. Jamie's rocking some uh, some Mad Hatter swag today. That's right, Neil, and I love it. So. Yeah. A lot of stuff's happened since last week. Uh, I got rid of the the goatee. There it um, is. She got a new sweatshirt. She got about three thousand new Facebook friends. I love my friends. Jamie is an internet sensation now. Uh, <laughs> Jamie D has has uh, blown up. So um, awesome time uh, that we had even last week at a Mad Hatter show event. So we went. We did the podcast. Uh, a week went by. Um, you and I. We actually met uh, Krista Grzowski. I uh, had a, a meet oh. and greet with her which was very cool. Um, we may uh, have her on a future event. Um, and then just as a fan, uh, you came to uh, to the Donnie Baker show that I opened. Yes. Uh, give us a little feedback on how that went. It was so much fun. It was almost like uh, 2019, like before COVID, before everything. It was Remember it was a blast. It was, was a blast. A, lot, a really super fun crowd, um, dedicated Donnie Baker fans. Somebody brought their newborn baby. I think fresh out of the the basket. I mean, it was it was very tiny little baby. Fresh out of the basket. That's <laughs> like, you just you never know what's going to happen at our shows. Uh, the Lebanon came out. Lebanon was very happy. It was the first show we've ever done at the American Legion. Um, we we drew a very large number of people there. I, like a lot of the town came out, so we're very happy that uh, Lebanon supported us. Um, and while we're speaking of Lebanon, we have uh, another page that is running our podcast this week they're streaming right now you might be watching it on the page for that sports bar uh it's located right there on 32 uh so far they've done like one um kind of a showcase type thing like it was a host it was a guest set and it was me i did an hour and then it was a three-person deal in the middle of the week um free show uh we're doing another one on october the yes, 29th we are. so um definitely thanks to our friends there at uh, the lebanon uh, that sports bar, uh, DJ Dangler is going to be uh, closing out the lineup coming up October 29th. Uh, is there anything else that maybe um, you can can bring up about I'm that gonna show? I'm going to be on it! Yay! Holy cow! <laughs> Was that lucky number seven? Is that the? I don't. Maybe five or six. You're still on a single digit number of shows. So we've had people like all the fans, all the new fans that you had, yeah. said, "Hey, when are you going to be performing? Lebanon, Indiana, October the 29th. You can come out there." And uh, and we can do that. I'm um, really excited to see DJ Dangler. You've never seen him before. I haven't. He's the most appeared headliner with uh, Neil Snyder Presents. Basically, yeah. the the smaller shows that I did before the whole Mad mm -hmm. Hatter thing started. So, um, I'm definitely a fan. Uh, also, give a shout out to the uh, Hobart Art Theater um, and uh, the Richmond uh, New Boswell Brewery and uh, Fourth Floor Blues Club. Um, they're streaming the show and. Uh, they have also, uh, they're going to have Second Chance. Uh, that's the next Mad Hatter yeah. Show's ticketed event. Second Chance will be performing uh, his yeah. rap slash R&B slash uh, rock rap <laughs> slash uh, country slash pop country slash it. country rap, like uh, all that kind of stuff. And uh, also on that show will be uh, our first guest. So that's going to be really cool when we get him to call in. Um, and then November the 13th, we're going to have Donnie Baker at uh, Lafayette. Um, that's a rescheduled show. And uh, are there still tickets about, for that? There's still tickets. We would encourage you to go to madhattershows.com and <laughs> yeah. get some of those uh, if you're in the Lafayette area. Um, but if you've already seen Donnie recently or you don't feel like traveling outside of Montgomery County and that's where you live, that's where Kevin Farley is going to be. We got three shows with Kevin Farley. He's, of course, yeah. the guy coming in uh, as the second guest on the Later show tonight. tonight. The, yeah. the guy we've been advertising. So um, that's how that's going. So. Tell me about your newfound fame here. You've got an <laughs> inbox that is bursting right now. Um, a lot of gentlemen are concerned that I have very low self-esteem or they think that I think I can't get a boyfriend. So they're very concerned and they write me and let me know that they're willing to take that hit for the whole community and just be my boyfriend. So I really appreciate that, but I don't want a boyfriend right now. <laughs> so you went on the show. You talked about how you were celibate. You went and said... Um, you know, like I don't, I don't have a lot of male admirers. I never but then said you, that. then no. you created a whole other account and started adding everybody and their brother, <laughs> and now you're like, oh, this is overwhelming. I can't I, believe that I'm getting all these messages. I added like five or six hundred people, and now, and then 
it would be probably 5,000, but I've had to like delete and, and stuff like that. So, so you're yeah. already purging, but there's room. So there's room. <laughs> there's room if you want to be my new special Jamie friend. D on uh, a Facebook. Actually, if you go to the Mad Hatter podcast page, there's a link there. I conveniently put it up there so you can just <laughs> click on it and send her a friend request. So Awesome. Um, so I'm actually more focused on my son's dating. Um, he has a girlfriend now, and he was over there, and he came home, and he's and he said, "Mom, they all they asked me to stay for dinner," and I was like, "Okay, well, you could have stayed, you know, like, I, you know, I'm not gonna cook." And he was like, "Well, I wanted to, but they were having ribs, and I don't know how to eat ribs, and I was afraid I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> so I need to teach my son how to eat ribs, apparently, or he's gonna be." unlucky in love like me so yeah this is uh we spent two <laughs> weeks since the last show and this is like this is where we advertise all of our major events with mad hatter shows and what we get is jamie talking about her problems with her son I'm and, the worst. and that kind of stuff so uh but no that's apparently that's connected with some people there's some people that are like look yeah we're gonna buy tickets to your stuff but um, yeah. But yeah. Let's let's learn more about Jamie. So it was a good <laughs> it was a good move us getting you on the show here. Uh, here's a special announcement though. Coming on Friday, you're going to be able to buy tickets to our first ever Tennessee show. It's in Lebanon, Tennessee. Uh, Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols will be doing a New Year's Eve show. I don't know if we have a graphic for that, but uh, Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols will be doing the show, and then there's an after party with the DJ and the drummer from Up Church's band. So that's if you're in the, the Tennessee area, if you can get down there, you want to party, or you want to make that trip, uh, you can do that. Remember, we also have um, December 31st in Indianapolis. We're going to have another show with uh, Pat Godwin and Reno Collier. That's going to be at the... Um, at the Irving Theater. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I didn't forget, guys. <laughs> we got this signed last last time. We show that here. We got the the star of Jingle All the Way to <laughs> Reno Collier signed it. It says Merry Christmas, and he put his signature on there. So uh, we will have you. There we go. There we go. Um, I'm giving this away because my Blu-ray player uh, apparently doesn't exist. It only plays DVDs in my uh, my home entertainment system, which is also my my laptop. So. Um, if you want to be considered for getting this priceless treasure, uh, send us a message or maybe even just let it pop up on the screen here and say, uh, tell us why you deserve this signed copy of Jingle All the Way 2, signed by Reno Collier. So um, we're at a spot right now where we're getting ready to prep for our first call in. Yes. Uh, some of you may have seen this guy on TikTok or YouTube or on Facebook. Um, he's actually worked with us. He opened for Uncle Cy. He opened for uh, one of the Upchurch shows, I think. Uh, we had him open for Second Chance another time when he was in Lafayette. Asked him, actually had him at our music festival last year as well at Backwoods um, from uh, Lexington area. His name is Drix, and let's, uh, let's give you a little preview of his music. Looks like uh, he's already called in here. Drix, can you hear us? Hello. Are you there? We see you. He's doing the same thing I did. He's, he's <laughs> going he's gonna to pause for a few seconds and make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> can you hear us, Drix? Oh. Do you have a microphone, Jordan? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Is your microphone working? <laughs> You have a mute button going on. This is the beauty of a live stream, guys. <laughs> this is all authentic, real. Oh, this is just hey, Hi. hey! Don't feel bad. Don Donnie Baker <laughs> froze a frame in the last week when he was in the bathtub, and we had like ten minutes of just like a shot of him frozen. So <laughs> at least you're moving here. Uh, Drix, uh, if, if people were scrolling and 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 you know stopping and they say, "Hey, that's that's an Upchurch beat," but that's not Upchurch's song. Uh, but Upchurch actually ended up sharing when you when you did the the parody song, and actually that was uh, that's maybe how a lot of people saw you to begin with. Uh, tell us a little bit about the the clip we just saw. So originally, you know, Upchurch did that song called YZ. And, you know, I felt the, the need for some reason to just do like a dad version of the song. All right. And uh, 
Can you hear me all right? I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're playing. He's playing with the levels back there. I just heard you really <laughs> well, and now my ears ringing. But yeah, we're great. Um, I can okay, hear you okay, good. Okay. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, it's a little a little bit um, feedback, but that's all right. Anyways, so up to, uh, back to this up church song. So I felt the need to do this dad version of it. I don't know why. I thought it was just super catchy. You can't ride in my minivan, and then. I did a video for it and people loved it, man. Up Church shared it. He got an absolute kick out of it. And that's the rest is history. All right. Well, tell me, who, who are those kids in your video? What's going on? Give us a backstory on that. So those kids are my kids. They are three year old now. At the time, they were probably like one and a half. I'm, I don't think they were quite two yet. Uh, they might have been two, but they are quintuplets that's five jamie that's five, five. i know i was trying all, to five born wow. at the same time <laughs> you look so young to have five little babies like that well they all came at the same time that's not <laughs> Will somebody explain to jamie how math works <laughs> how uh, i'm 29 but don't let it deceive you yeah. i've got uh, a lot of gray hair under this hat <laughs> right, <laughs> it's right. kind of like it's poking out quite a bit i tell you so how do you even con continue making music when you got five kids at home? Like, how do you even balance? Because I assume you're working full time, right? You're taking care of your kids. That's you've brought that up yeah. on your songs. You're proud of that. Yeah. You're not. You're so, not. Uh, uh, I, I work as a, a painter full time. So I do that 40 to 60 hours a week. Uh, come home, raise five kids, you know, help cook and clean. And then late at night, usually by 10 o'clock to midnight, I'll go out to the I have a shed out back that I've converted into a studio and I literally record myself out there in the studio. Wow. So that's uh do you, you don't sleep a lot. It doesn't sound like. <laughs> uh Oh, uh -oh. Maybe something the shiny. Baby, happened. The babies are calling. Somebody's like outside my house screaming. Wow. <laughs> They're like, I see y'all on the Facebook. <laughs> is this something you need to take care of? You have to be like, this this uh, is this is strange, but yeah, it's unscripted when it's live. So um, <laughs> that's right. So you've got a new album just came out too. Tell us a little bit about that. So I, uh, whenever I did the whole you know original YZ remix, it kind of started a thing called Dad Squad, and it became like a hashtag. Hence my shirt, rocking that out tonight. Hashtag Dad Squad, and. Um, Every time I put a little video out for the Dad Squad stuff, which I did the, the Lizzo parody uh, as well, it's just became bigger and bigger. So people really love it with being able to see my kids in the background and stuff and really representing for all the dads out there. You know, if you really want to go get it, even though you have kids, just go chase that dream. Um, so I, I'm putting that out there for all the dads. And that kind of represents what the album's all about, you know. Um, that's what a lot of the content in the in the lyrics are. So I wrote a whole album called Hashtag Dad Squad, and I've got two actual full-on dad songs on the album. One being Dad Squad, and the other one being Dad Bod, which <laughs> right, I'm right. gonna shoot a video for that one as well. Well, that's a great thing to bring up the dad bot. Like, honestly, there's no real super serious songs. Even when you really like when you get on the you still have a personality where you, you apparently don't take yourself super seriously. Like you're going to be it's not a comedy album, but you're funny on a lot of the songs. Is that something that came about after the kids? Or have you always been like that when you do music? Man, I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> I like to cut up a lot. But honestly, the, the funny part about, you know, everybody has that whole thing. They're like, oh, dads, they're just especially kind of like the older dads. They all rock out the, the jorts and the, the white Nikes <laughs> or the New Balance shoes and tuck in the shirt. And I was like, man, I'm really just going to push this. And hey, believe it or not, those shoes are really comfortable. So <laughs> I and my wife hates it, but I love wearing those things. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, back in the day, it was all keep it real. But people didn't keep it real. They kept a persona. You actually are keeping it real. You're like, look, I'm coming home to my house with my kids, and I'm I'm, I'm come, leaving my job, and I'm I'm feeding the kids, and I'm diapering them. I mean, it's uh, uh, what's the what's your crowd like? Do you get do you get people that are not normally listening to rap music that are like, I dig your stuff because it's fun. 
dude, honestly, I got, especially with this new album release, and I got a lot of messages back that people who don't like country music, because it's predominantly, I do predominantly country rap music. And I got a lot of feedback saying, man, I don't like country music at all. And I definitely don't like rap music, but I support the fact that you're a dad of five kids and you're still trying to, you know, go out here and do your dream, live it up and work for a living. And I got a lot of feedback, people saying they absolutely love the music, even though they don't like rap music or country music. Um, So my fan base is kind of all over the place. Right. Awesome. That's, and that's how you, that's how you get bigger, right? When, when people that wouldn't normally, I mean, if you only, if you only have a very niche audience, you're not going to grow. So that's awesome that you're getting your name out there. Hopefully this helps yeah, a little man. bit tonight too. So like what other famous artists have you worked with? Or uh, I've worked with Up Church. I've worked with Jelly Roll, Struggle Jennings, Second Chance. Uh, I think we're supposed to be doing a show together or a bunch of shows coming up. And you'll so be on the one November the seventh, right? Uh, yeah, November. You're 7th. in Richmond, right? Uh, and then next year, there's there's some shows next year. I don't remember the dates off the top of my head. Uh, we haven't um, published them, so yeah, don't don't give oh. away that yet. But yeah, <laughs> more more drinks and more second chances coming. Um, how about yeah. um, collaborations? Have you worked with any of these folks and re- recorded songs together? Anybody that that uh, some folks out there might have heard of? Yeah, so I did uh, do a track with Jelly Roll. Uh, what was it? Two years ago called pull the plug and that was a really good song i like it a lot uh you could stream that on my spotify or it's on you know of course google play is going away but it's on youtube it's on everything um i just recently did a song with a guy named hard target which is really big uh and a really surprising thing i got a guy called hillbilly J. I i don't know if you've heard of him but he is uh he's kind of like a parody guy he's comedian type deal and man i got him on my new album and he actually killed it really hard yeah i've heard the new album i like it a lot (laughs) um number one and number 10 are my favorite i don't have all the song titles but those were the two best on there are you getting feedback are people liking a wide variety or is there kind of a consensus that one or two of these songs are the best man i'm getting a wide variety a lot of people like the uh dad squad obviously they like the the song with hard target called early and then like you said uh you like number 10 all i know and uh, a lot of people are liking the dad bod because i mean they they can just relate to it and it goes super hard how long does it take for you to write a song uh well it depends like that Lizzo parody, obviously, you know, a lot of it was laid out, but I did write, rewrite a lot of the lyrics and stuff. That took me like 20 minutes to do that song. Uh, some songs, they could take me up to a week, depending on, you know, if I feel like it's just not fully there whenever I'm recording it and stuff. Did you, you, get, come, oh, did you come from a musical family or where did this, where did this come from? Um, so my, you know, some of my dad's side of the family, they like to play the guitar a little bit. Um, I got an uncle who's really good at guitar more. So I kind of picked it up back in college because I had an ex-girlfriend who kind of broke my heart and I wanted to get that anger out. So I wrote (laughs) a song about her and it kind of, kind of just went from there and just kept on getting better and better. So do you write your lyrics out and then go find a beat? Do you, or, you know, does somebody say, Hey, I got a beat for you. See what you can do with this. Like what, how, how does it normally start to finish? How do you start uh, the writing process? Well, honestly, uh, pretty much it goes both ways because there's sometimes that I can already have kind of like the layout of what some of the lyrics and stuff that I want. I, I may have a reference beat that I've kind of listened to that I thought was really cool. And I got a little, um melody in my head and wrote from there and then i went and found a beat to match it or had somebody custom make a beat to the lyrics so i sometimes i will literally um go and record the melodies and send them to my producers and they will come back and send me a beat and i'm like man that's good or i like this we need to change this or i can find a beat and be like well, I'll just write from this. And, you know, sometimes that's the best work both ways. So uh, what would be your dream duet? Like if you could work with anyone. 
I mean, obviously, you're already working with some really, really great people. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I don't really know. There, there's such so many people out there that I would love to work with that I'm not quite sure who my dream person to work with. Obviously, I love to work with Ryan Upchurch. That'd be super awesome. I think people would love it. I think we could write a killer song. Uh, but... I think I would like to venture out and do some some other genres because I'm very versatile. You know, I like to to sing a little bit. I like to um, just do a little bit of everything and not just strictly rap or just do like the country rap. I'd like to venture out and do a few other things. Who'd you listen to growing up? Like what was uh, what were your inspirations? Man, growing up in my household, I listened to a lot of um Christian music. It was very Christian oriented in my family. And I listened to a little bit of country. So I, I listened to uh, like a lot of Toby Keith growing up. Um, not so much of the old school stuff. It was more so n newer. And my very first rap album I ever owned was the Black Eyed Peas <laughs> album, believe it or not. Is that uh, rap? You're so that. young. It's it's pop yeah. rap. Yeah. I guess it's, uh, <laughs> So was this the fir their first album? Or was this already they had Fergie there, and it was all the stuff that's on the radio? Uh, I think it was. I think Fergie was already there. Like I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, Where is the love? I think that was one of the very first. <laughs> Wasn't that Justin Timberlake was on there too? That I ever got into. Yeah. yeah. So so basically, um, and I know you're not a you know you're not an authority on on country rap that kind of stuff, but uh, who are some other folks if uh, if people dig your sound? Who are some other folks that exist in this genre? Because there's going to be, honestly, people out there scrolling, and they stop, and they're watching this, and they're like, country rap, that's a thing? Like, I hear that sometimes. Like, when we talk about who we've booked, not everybody understands that this is a legitimate genre with several artists, not just a handful. So uh, who, who else are the folks that you've worked with or that you uh, uh, collaborate with or you'd like to that, that are kind of the folks you look up to in this genre? Uh, so you got Jelly Roll. He's a huge inspiration, man. That dude, just his backstory is really cool. Uh, so he, he's really big inspiration to me. You got Struggle Jennings. You got Adam Calhoun, Moonshine Bandits, Justin Time, Big Murph. Um, you know, a lot of people know who Bubba Sparks is. He's kind of one of the I wouldn't say he's one of the originators fully, but he is one of the OGs. Give him a pioneer status because he was he was doing that two decades ago. You know what I mean? Like that was, that, was. that first album yeah, with Timbaland. Yeah, thought he was crazy, but you know what? He did it, and he made you know a lot of money and stuff doing it. Then you got Yellow Wolf, man. He doesn't really like being labeled as country rap, but dude's got a lot of country. Hey, to me, he's my favorite. If if he fits, he's my favorite in this genre. He's, he's a yeah. very, very good artist. He can sing too. I mean, just like you're talking about being, you know, this guy could sing a hook. He could sing the whole songs and have a rap break on the song. He can rap the whole song like, uh, you know, Southern production or, or a mm -hmm. hip hop uh, production, that kind of thing. So um, what are your, what are your preferences? What do you, what kind of song do you like to, to lay down a track over? Like uh, as far as, you know, could, could we see you doing a, a straight up hip hop album at some point, or uh, do you always want that country flavor in it? Uh, you know, I've, I've had, what is this, my fifth studio album. I've done a lot of projects on the side before I kind of went solo. I, I was in a couple of different groups. So there was a lot of more so of the hip hop side before I ever fully converted over into like a country rap style. So if you go back and listen to my old, older stuff, there is quite a bit of regular hip hop behind it. Um, but I, you know, I, I like doing the rock stuff too. I, I would totally love to do a full on rock album if that was, you know, if I get to that level of where I can go in and track everything um, and make some money that way. I'd love to do a full rock album. So you said you're finished. You just finished your fifth album. So we know there's going to be a six, right? Because you're young and you're just starting. But so when's the sixth baby coming? Oh, there is no sense. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there. He's like, stop the question. <laughs> hey, I only have one, so I get it. 
So how's that? How's that work? Let's say you want to take because you're married. We haven't we haven't mentioned the wife yet. You're talking about you. You got all this. You still got to You got to make wife happy too. Let's. There's date night probably sometimes, right? When you guys go to uh, to hire a babysitter, is one enough? Do you have to hire two? Like, how, how does this work? For you know, some people probably wonder at home how how you how you do five kids. How do you do bath time and dinner time and all this kind of stuff? Oh man, uh, sometimes you gotta have two people for real. Uh, <laughs> especially at night, we literally laid the kids down like maybe let's see, it's nine twenty six. Like literally twenty minutes ago, right before or right before I called you all, we were just laying the kids down and they were going crazy. So you kind of do got to have more than one hands. It definitely helps out a lot. Are they all in one room? Oh no! Oh. <laughs> you got the girls in one room and There's you got the three. Boys. They don't stay in one room <laughs> very long. Wondering. We did just move. Uh, I think it was back in the end of April. So we we got a new house and it's a lot bigger and everybody's got more space around here. Okay. Well, we've got the title track. We're going to play a small part of the title track from your new album. Uh, we're going to switch to that and then I want you to talk about it a little bit because you've you've had this thing's gone viral. This is uh, on TikTok and Facebook. Like, this is all over the place now. People at home, they may not even realize this is you. So let's see a clip of the new title track from Hashtag Dad Squad. The official uniform right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I can see where you can become an internet icon right now. You can this stuff can yeah, can go man. around, but to, what kind of numbers are we talking about? Ten thousand, twenty thousand? How many people have seen this new video? Oh my gosh! Just on Facebook alone, it hit over a hundred and thirteen thousand views so far. Oh my gosh! Uh, nice. And that's that's not. I guess that's been almost two weeks now, something like that. Awesome! I saw you're on TikTok also. This this is taking off there as well. Yeah, man, we've done TikTok and it blew up on there. We got a couple other viral videos that's out there too. A lot of people don't realize it, but my son and I have gone viral. Let's see, three times now. And what were those other videos? Uh, the other videos were literally, I'll say the first one, 50 Cent shared a video of my son with his butt hanging out, scratching <laughs> it, saying, with a, it was kind of like a meme thing. Right. Uh, and, and it was like what I'm doing after work. So that was kind of funny. But then the same kid, literally, we, me and him jumped, a, we ran around in a car and jumped a ramp and went over like two different uh, little cars and we went stupid viral for that one man it was crazy wow so where can people get your dad squad shirts because i really like the tie-dye one oh yeah you like the i one love the, the tie-dye video. one a lot yeah. of people like those yes uh so i don't really fully do the uh, the tie-dye ones unless it's a big order yeah. of them then i will do a bunch of those but you can go to shop Drick's dot com uh and you can get you can order shirts on there okay you can also message me and i've got shirts that i ship out um as well so awesome. there's two different Drix, little areas D -R -I -X, you can do you can message my, right? my drix page or you can go shop com. and that's d-r-i-x right just one x d-r-i-x awesome all right i got something else i want to pitch to you as well because i think um i think you're starting to do pretty well but i think we can take you to the next level um, you got the line in the one song that's like uh, uh, white Nikes jean shorts, right? And then in yeah. this video, we've shown you you've graduated to the New Balance, right? Yeah, uh, but, you know, but your kids are up. young. You're a young balances. dad, that kind of thing. I'm an old dad. I got kids that are already young adults. They're college age, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm thinking that we can maybe we can take this to the next level. Uh -oh. And what we got here, um, this is the grown kids dad squad uh, right Whoa. here. You take a look at this. This is uh, 
Orthopedic. Uh, this is a nun bush. Uh, I used to have some Dr. Scholl's, but they fell apart. Nun bush is a little bit better shape. And if we look here and we switch it like this, you see the gel tabs <laughs> on the inside there that'll help keep your okay. keep your heels going, right? You can wear this with black tube socks and khaki shorts. That's what I do. And, uh, nice. you know, I feel like we can have our own, like, affiliated uh, posse, maybe, <laughs> like the hashtag yeah. grown dad squad. I don't know if we can, can get that copyrighted. Like, I don't know. We can, we can make something happen. We'll contact we our attorneys. Uh, yeah. Also, I was thinking maybe you could record a remix and I could be on the remix. Uh, so I wrote some some lyrics out and uh, I'm thinking maybe <laughs> we can do this. So um, if we can uh, get that beat here. Um, uh -oh. See if we got our back here. All right, let me wait for the right <laughs> spot to come in. Hold on. Okay. I'm feeling it. Why is it when we agree to meet at like 5 p.m., but now it's already 5.18, and you don't even answer when I call? Like, yeah, you're grown, but I'm still the guy paying on your cell phone bill, right? <laughs> like, I text you, and you don't reply for like three days, but like... Every time I see you, you've got your phone out. Like, why is it that you're ignoring me? Like, oh, you only come to me when you need money. And now you're thinking about maybe you're going to move down to Alabama with your mom <laughs> set up here. We already agreed you're going to see this electrical program all the way through. And now, uh, now we're not sure it's even going to happen. And maybe your credits aren't going to transfer. And um, okay. he's probably, you're not going to put me on the song, are you? It's, uh, uh, we'll, we'll just, <laughs> let me think about what that What if I said it all you, fast, okay? like the bone thugs or something, one. right? Like, it doesn't have to rhyme if you it just first go but i thought it was great <sighs> <All> right, <fine. laughs> that seemed a little oh, wrong tell us man. how we can find your album tell us how we can how we can support drix uh because we got to go here in a, in a minute but uh tell us how to how to make you money and make sure those kids don't go hungry <laughs> all right y'all so you can find me on every social media platform that is drix d-r-i-x you can also find my albums on all social or uh all media platforms, which is Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, and Amazon Music or Title at Drix, D R I X, hashtag Dad Squad. Awesome. And the next time they can see you live is Saturday, November 7th at the uh, the Richmond Brewery, right? The new Boswell Brewery downstairs. Uh, it's not upstairs in the Blues Club. It's it's downstairs in a really cool uh, environment. And uh, you're opening for Strizzo and Second Chance, right? Like that's uh, yeah, um, man, looking forward that's to that. Gonna be a hell of a show. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by here, and uh, I'm glad I'm glad we've both had a hiccup as we're getting started here. We'll see if <laughs> Kevin can right away hit the hit the volume or if. Uh, if it's just going to be a trademark of the show here, but uh, uh, thanks for taking a chance on our brand new podcast here. And hopefully we get you some new viewers and, and more people hear your, your music. You wake up tomorrow and it's 200,000. Let's do it. Awesome. man. Thank you nice all so much. Y'all have a good night. You too. All right. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Bye. You remember when growing up, like, Ooh. like, like rappers were like, they were thugs, right? Like was, <laughs> I was just scared. They were from the streets and all this is the nicest guy on the planet. Like, uh, like uh, uh, John, the guy that's the the, the the mad header, the guy behind this, is he was talking the other day. He's like, man, he's like, if he wasn't like married up, that's who I'd want my daughter to marry. Like, he's the he, nicest I guy know. on the planet. He works all day. Yeah. He, uh, he he goes to work. He comes home. He takes care of the kids. He grows and records. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw in the background there. His wife's in the video with him. Uh, yeah, she came with him saw. to Backwoods last year. Yeah. Like they're. They're really functional and wholesome. It's really weird. Uh, it's children. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> 2020, you don't see that all the time, and this is really cool. So, no. um, good for them. Right. I'm surprised they don't have a reality show with like his music and. I don't know. They might have been pitched it. I don't know. Yeah. If that's how they want to live. But yeah. uh, if, you know, if somebody's watching this and, and, and you want to get that going, <laughs> yeah, take a look. Somebody, somebody got on there. I didn't want to tell him because I didn't, I didn't know how he would respond to it. Somebody said on there, he reminded him of Fred Durst. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, Emily yeah. says that on there. So hopefully that was that was not a dig. <laughs> hopefully that was like a hey, I like Fred Durst, and that was a. She yeah, she is pretty much dead on with that. Yeah, she's he, he even without the cap, but definitely yeah. with the cap. <laughs> yeah, he was a really nice, fun guy. I wouldn't mind having him as my neighbor, old country rapper guy. Yeah, but you have the kids like <laughs> well loud get off my, fighting. Get and, off my lawn. <laughs> That's the thing. This is that's what this has become. This is supposed to basically be an infomercial for our products, and we just end up talking about your kids and this guy's kids, and <laughs> oh, okay. like we're we're gonna be on uh, like Lifetime <laughs> channels gonna pick us up. Like this is a. Uh, I just wonder how they uh, knew who the babies were when they were born. 
I don't know, like how they mark them because all baby, well, every mom's baby special, but. You know, I would and, imagine and, and five newborns. Parents things. can probably regulate. Like you, yeah. you don't like not feed a kid for a while. Right? Like that's. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, wonder if they had like little rubber bands or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe when we get, maybe we'll have Drix back <laughs> on the show at some point. Like they'll go to kindergarten <laughs> or something. We'll have to bring them back on the show, yeah. and we can talk about it. Uh, so we just said Friday uh, we're going to be announcing the. Uh, all the particulars on where this Lebanon, Tennessee show is with Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols. Um, that's this one of two events that's happening New Year's Eve. The other one is happening at the Irving Theater. Uh, let's give away some tickets to that. Uh, right here, Pat Godwin and Reno Collier. I got a pair of tickets right now uh, that we're going to give away. So um, we're staring at the screen. If you want to <laughs> type on there why we should give it to you, that's awesome. Otherwise, if you're computer. if you're shy and you don't want your avatar <laughs> up on the screen, uh, go ahead and, and send an inbox message to Mad Hatter Shows. Um, and it's an early show, so it is. You can you can go to you this can go and you can and still still go, go home get, and you could go home and you could be lame, or yeah. <laughs> you could make that your first stop of many and and still bring in the new year and get crazy. Yes. Uh, these guys are both really funny. Um, what were your other impressions of, of Drix? Is there anything else? like? Do you do you listen to country rap? I don't. I we, we book a lot of those <laughs> artists. You're gonna have to start. I know. I I will. I will. I will do that. I will do that for Mad Hatter Nation. So I'd be a better hostess for everyone. We need but, you to be an ambassador. <laughs> an ambassador. I I just I don't know. I listen to a lot of like 80s music, and, and then today it was a little bit of mix um, with some Tupac. Yeah. But I just felt like I need to expose. I think the closest <laughs> thing to country rap in the 80s was like when Cool Moe did Wild Wild West. You know what I mean? Or like, that's like a, a Ghetto Cowboy. I remember that was the, not the 80s. Oh, I that, was, that was that was like the late 90s. So that was. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, we got our second guest is in the studio yeah. now. Uh, not, well, not, not in the studio. Virtually in okay. the studio, right? Like and uh, and he's waving here. Let's uh, let's go to Kevin Farley. Bring him How in. How are you? Hello. You got the. All right. So you win the show tonight because uh, I already like like we went on the air and I didn't pick it up for three seconds. And then our last guest, Drix, got on and he didn't have audio for a while. But you are a pro at this. You're already. We can <laughs> see you and we can hear you. How are you doing tonight, Kevin? I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing yeah. pretty good. We're doing well. We're doing well. How are you keeping yourself busy during quarantine time and coronavirus era? What's up with you? Yeah, well, I've been uh, doing a lot. I've been my shows are kind of picking up again a little bit. And uh, I just did one in New Jersey. And now, uh, yeah, it's starting to pick up a little. And I'm also teaching classes, you know. I have uh, some classes down here in Fort Myers where I am. I am, And uh, and I'm also doing some shows down here, too. So nice. They've you know, pretty much opened up, up, right? Like they're back, they're back in business for those who dare. Is that uh, what's going on down in Florida right now? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so what, what are the classes that you're teaching? I don't want to assume anything, so... Oh, I just stand up classes and improv, you know, uh, just uh, doing that kind of thing. I've been writing a book. Awesome. Awesome. What kind of book? Or can you tell, uh, or is it? Me and my wife just uh, quarantined, you know, and all, you know, but just we've had a lot of crazy stories. You know, we were. We were in New York and we decided to go to Florida and we just stayed for six months. So. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> nice. A, that is nice. Well, that's a fair question. What kind of thing are you teaching? Because you could be teaching a lot. Like, let's learn, run down your resume. You've been a, um, a director, right? An executive producer on a documentary. You've been, a, uh, you've been in a boy band. Uh, you've been uh, <laughs> uh, stand up. You've, you've acted. Like, what all, what all have you? Is there anything you haven't done in the entertainment industry that, that, that you're still wanting yeah. to do? I don't know. You know, um, I think the boy band thing is a little strange. I don't know if I can teach any boy band moves anymore, but your Wikipedia page says that you're a dancer. Dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, um, some of the other stuff. Yeah. I don't, and directing, I'm not, I haven't directed in a long time, so I'm not, I'm not the best director, I think, but you know, the other stuff I'm pretty good at, it, you know, so you were talking about shows and we all know that you have F is for family on, on Netflix. Um, so like, what have you been binging on Netflix, if anything, during quarantine? I binge on F is for family. I love yeah. my own show. <laughs> yeah. It's an honor to be a part of that show. And, um, I, I've been watching, um, 
a lot of uh, old movies, you know, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasms. And I go back and watch some of the old stuff, awesome. you know. Um, yeah. Um, I watched Tiger King. Everybody did. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Carol oh. Baskin was on a Dancing with the Stars and... Um, yeah. yeah, is that in your future? Or you got <laughs> yeah. this dancing experience. Could we see you on Dancing with the Stars sometime? Uh, oh, I don't know. My uh, my dancing skills are over. I think <laughs> um, maybe though I would do it probably, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, we didn't hire you to dance. We've got you coming and doing stand up <laughs> comedy uh, November twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Tickets are at MadHatterShows dot com. We're bringing you to God's country, to the <laughs> West Central yeah. Indiana. Uh, we'll have you on the east side of yes. Indianapolis on uh, November the 12th. Uh, November yeah. the 13th, my hometown of Crawfordsville at the Country Club. Um, yeah. And then uh, the next night at uh, Plainfield, which is a, a suburb on the west side of Indianapolis. And uh, yeah. they're super excited for you, too. Um, uh, what, any experiences with Indiana? Like, is this is this an area you like? Or are you like, I got to get out of there and back to Florida? Like, how's... <laughs> No, I've been, or I think I've done um, some of those places before. So I know we put you in Fort Wayne and Seymour before. Uh, so you're yeah, kind of kind of getting yeah. the. Uh, I think I did that. You're getting and, the um, secondary Indiana market tour, <laughs> that type yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I always thought it was great. It's a great state, the Hoosier State. You know, it's a, a lot of great people, and and you're originally from the um, Midwest, right? Do they count that as the that, Midwest? You're originally from the, from the Midwest. Do you consider that? Or are you from uh, like Wisconsin. the Northwest with Wisconsin? Is that on the borderline? Like what's right on Madison. I mean, I was born in Madison, Wisconsin. And, uh, but since moved to California for 20 years and, and now I live in New York and Florida really right now, but New York. really. <clears throat> awesome. I've been dominating the conversation. I'm giving you a chance. You're not jumping on it. Uh, how about, uh, so you've got, you've got a ton of credits, right? Like you've been doing stuff for decades. Um, looking back, what is, what are some of your favorites? What are the things that like, if somebody had never heard of Kevin Farley, where would you point them as to here's what I do? Oh, probably together the, the band, the boy band on MTV. Um, you know, some of my brother's movies has in them. Um, and also, uh, I did Just Shoot Me, a lot of different uh, episodes of Just Shoot Me. I love that. Uh, I love that series. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think F is for family, you know? Yeah, that's certainly what's hot right now. It's honestly one of the best shows that's on Netflix, I think, right now. Like, it's one of those where when people ask for suggestions, like, I'm throwing it out. Like, check this show out. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm very proud to be part of it, you know. So how's that so, working with the the coronavirus and all that, the making new episodes and stuff, is it? Well, I think with the M Fs for Family, we, what's nice is we were in a booth, so we don't have to be with each other or anything. We can do that, you know, remotely. So you, so you just do that from, from your home and everyone else is just wherever they're at and yeah, record your... Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. I know. We don't have to even <laughs> see each other. <laughs> so you've been a voice actor. You've you've obviously done you know uh, movies and TV. Uh, you've also been in some music videos. Like, what's what's the most fun? You know, is there is there one yeah. thing that makes you go, hey, I need you know, I, I'd like to do more of this, or is it just you you just do a survey of everything? I had a friend of mine, uh, Nigel Day, who is a great music director, and he put me in all these music <laughs> videos, which I was happy to do. I didn't care. And yeah, I think I did a Nickelback video. I did a Lighthouse video. Right. Uh, those were great. Yeah. They and the one fun. that you're endearing in, the one that's almost like you tear up at the end of it, is the Rascal Flats. Uh, you're actually yeah. like, you're good in that. Like yeah. that's a. Uh, have you ever have you ever wanted to be like like I want to I want a serious role? Like you're known for being funny, but have you ever wanted to tackle like an intensely you know a, a, a romance or some type of uh, thriller or something like that? Yeah, I've always wanted to. But, you know, I just keep getting pitched hold. I don't know. I don't mind it. You know, I'll just keep doing what I do. Uh, but I would love to do a dramatic uh, something. You know, I don't know what. But, you know, so, you can anything. probably write it yourself. You've done, you've, you've done some screenplays before, too, right? Yeah, I've written some. I, uh, 
mostly comedies, but I wouldn't mind writing a, a dramatic thing. Um, you know, writing is difficult though. It's a lot of work. <laughs> So but, um, um, you yeah, were in the you were in the boy band and you've been in a lot of music videos and stuff. But do you are you musical yourself? Do you play any instruments or sing or? I like to sing, but I'm not. <laughs> you know, I don't know. No. I met my wife. She did a musical. She writes musicals, and uh, we met back in 2014. And she hired me to sing on this Broadway kind of play. And even though I don't have a great voice, but um, I like to sing, you know, but I, you know, nobody's going to hire me to sing. Really. <laughs> well, she did. <laughs> she did. She did. You know, but that's the only job I ever got. <laughs> but I, uh, I do love singing. I don't play any instruments. I wish, but uh, I don't play anything. I love to listen to music, but I just don't, I can't play it. Awesome. How's how are things different between like the high you get or the rush I guess you get um, when you're in front of the camera and you're you're playing a role and that type of thing versus stand up? Can you talk a little bit about that? Is how, how is stand up different? Because because you've done a lot of both. Yeah, you know I think uh, when you're in front of the camera, it's more tedious. It's more you know do it again, do it again. You know and the. Uh, the uh, stand-up is more immediate. It's it's like you know you, you do something funny and uh, the audience reacts and, and then it's over. You only do it once, right? So one is a lot of work, and you don't get to see the final product till much later. And stand-up is immediate, which I love. You know. So how long have you been doing stand-up? How old were you when you started? You know uh, about. 2012 is when I went to the comedy store and started to work out my set and I've been developing it ever since, you know, never ends. What, what, no. what prompted that? <laughs> I mean, you, you've, you've gotten pretty steady work, uh, acting all the way through there. What, what was there an itch you wanted to scratch or what prompted you to go, Hey, I, I'd like to like, start going to, instead of doing Hollywood stuff, I'd like to end up in some, some small clubs in, in the middle of Indiana, or I want to be a uh, doing weekend somewhere. Like what, what, what made you go, Hey, this is, this is something I, I need to do. I just like to work, you know? And I think this is a way for me to stay busy, you know, during, uh, it, it, it originally it was a way to me to keep busy during in between roles, you know, and then it just sort of got bigger and bigger. And now I do mostly stand up, you know? Okay. Very cool. So, yeah. I mean, obviously you've got that pedigree, right? You've got that. Uh, <laughs> um, you, so you had, uh, um, what was the reaction, I guess, of uh, sometimes you hear, you know, somebody's a celebrity basically, and then they go into stand up. Do you feel like you, uh, um, you put in the work, I, you feel like you've uh, um, put in the reps and all that kind of stuff that you can uh, be recognized as, as a stand-up comedian or are, you, or are your shows celebrity shows? Oh yeah, I've seen that guy on TV. Like how would you, how would you rank where you're at as far as, um, you, you know, how you see yourself? Are you a comic or are you just an actor that does comedy sometimes? No, I like to think of myself as a stand-up. I've done a lot of shows and so, for the last, you know, since 2012, I've done quite a bit of shows. It's not something I do once in a while to get, you know, more money or whatever like that. I'm constantly out on the road and I'm working my act a lot. So, yeah, I would think that I'm, uh, I like to think of myself as a stand up, a real stand up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I've been dominating today. What do you got for <laughs> Kevin? Um, like, who are some of the comics that, that you grew up loving, watching? Uh, you know, I grew up loving uh, stand-up-wise. Um, I think uh, Richard Pryor and, and George Carlin yes. and uh, Steve Martin. Oh, yes. Those Steve guys. Martin. I kind of grew up. And Bill, and Bing, uh, sorry, uh, Bill Cosby. Uh, I liked him, even though he's, yeah. you know, since well. fallen out of favor. But, you know, back in the day, I used to like, I loved Bill Cosby, you know. So I thought those guys were uh, some of the best, you know, stand-up comics. Yeah, George like Carlin, I think, really. 
I love Steve Martin. We we must have watched The Jerk a bazillion times in my house. <laughs> the Jerk is a great movie. It's, it's so good. I love Bernadette. What about uh yeah. what, what about your movies that you've done that you look back on? Uh, are there any certain roles that you just really enjoyed? Do you ever go back and 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 rewatch those? Uh, you know, um, to me, The Water Boy, obviously. Uh, um, when you're interviewing Captain Insano, like that's, you yeah. know, I got to revisit that at least once a year. Like that's a great moment. Do you have any, like, I'm really happy I was a part of that moments on any of the stuff that you've, that you've done? Well, that's one of them. I love that water boy. Uh, that was fun. We shot that in Florida. That was a lot of fun. I like that. I like being a part of that. And, uh, there was a small movie I did with Richard Farnsworth and David Lynch. It was a, a David Lynch film. That was a G-rated David Lynch film. Oh, straight story. And, yeah. And it was sort of a serious part. It wasn't really funny, but we uh, it's called The Straight Story. And we took it to the Cannes Film Festival, and we had a blast doing that. And that was something I did that I really enjoyed, you know. Got to work with my brother John, and it was it was interesting. And worked with David Lynch. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that. Yeah. That's a dream director to work with. That's... Uh... Um, yeah, really cool. Mark guy. that off the the bucket list <laughs> there. Um, what can yeah. audience expect November twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth? What's your stand up like? Uh, you, you're you're a wide, uh, you know, varied, uh, talented guy uh, in in all these other projects. Like, what can what kind of humor do you do? What kind of things do you talk about? Yeah, I I don't know. I don't get too political. I don't, especially in this environment. <laughs> I want to keep my head. So, uh, yeah. No, and talk about my life growing up, my relationships, my weight, <laughs> you know, food. <laughs> talk about, yeah, all those kinds of things. You know, living in the Midwest, talk a lot about that. Because there's how so, there was how many siblings? You come from a large family, right? Yeah, four, actually five siblings. You know, five. So there were five, six uh, people, five kids. Five kids. Yeah. And but, you still oh, you still got an appreciation for food. You were you're all <laughs> fighting over food, I guess uh, that kind of thing. One of your one of your clips on YouTube that you can find is uh, um, your dad prepping you guys to uh, to hit the buffet. Um, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I do that joke. Yeah. Have you been yeah, handling 2020 with the buffets it's, it's, shutting down? What's that? The buffets are shutting down everywhere. Like it's uh, I'm 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 uh, with you right there. It's been tough. You know, <laughs> heartbreaking. Why the buffets, you know? And it's coming back, though. Like, I uh, I went to, to Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. I found a Shoney's down there. I don't know if they make it all the way down to Florida Shoney's. or not. Well, <laughs> Shoney's was real, still up. That's high end. It was, uh, so it was after church uh, on Sunday. Like, it's that that traffic time, that, that time of uh, that everybody's there. And there's all these old people, right? And nobody's wearing a mask. We're all piled in around this buffet. And, and uh, we're, we're all close to each other, breathing on each other. And they're like, hey take this little plastic glove. This is what you have to wear to keep us all safe while you're using the buffet. So that's, that's how buffets have changed now is you get the glove uh, when you come to the that's Midwest. Funny. I remember when, when you could smoke in restaurants and you would have to walk through the smoking at Shoney's to get to the non-smoking, which was <laughs> parade you through the smoking alley. Yeah. Shoney's had good ice cream. I know that. I just always know I needed yeah. a little bear. Yeah, Sh Shoney's is what like the we, we're down to just a few ponderosas now. Uh, is there is there any Midwest eatery that you're like you're like you're coming back to the Midwest? Is there any place that you want to make sure you eat when you get here? Well, I always like uh, Cracker Barrel on yes. the road. They're starting to you serve know. alcohol, like pilot program, yeah. some alcohol service there. They are. Yeah. <laughs> Cracker well, Barrel's getting with it. I get drunk and look at the <laughs> Laffy Taffy. <laughs> Play uh, the the game, the the genius yeah. game that I obviously yeah. am not going to win. Cause <laughs> never, I never win that game. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, they're gonna you're gonna have that you're gonna have a, a 24 ounce of malt liquor and you'll be sitting out there on the rocking chair uh doing your thing outside the cracker barrel any other places that are like uh like we got to go there in the midwest like we had uh we had sam losco from canada um 
uh, from Trailer Park Boys, and we had some shows with him, and he was excited to hit Steak and Shake because apparently they didn't have that where he lives. Is there oh, yeah. is there anything in this area that you're just like, oh, I'm going back to the Midwest, I'm going to hit you know, White Castle or whatever? Steak and Shake is awesome, too. Oh, I love Steak and Shake. Are those down in Florida? Is that a... Is that something they don't have down in Florida? No. Okay. I worked at Steak and Shake. I was the worst waitress ever. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. I I remember just putting way too much salad dressing, and I couldn't understand why the people were angry. But now I'm older, and I like okay, yeah, I understand what I. I would have been the worst uh, waiter. I'm glad (laughs) I never was. I would have messed up everything. Oh, I was I was terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um. So I guess we'll, we'll kind of wrap up here. We're getting close to the 10 o'clock time. Uh, here's your time to pitch your own show here. Why should people come see you in uh, Indianapolis at the Irving Theater, the Crawfordsville yeah. Country Club, or the Plainfield Eagles? Uh, what, what are they going to see on stage with the, the Kevin Farley show? I just want to have a good time. You know, I want to have it like a party. You know, I think we've all been through too much this uh, summer, and it's been six months of of hell and i think that we should just come out and have a good time i want everybody to have a party awesome. and you know uh have a, i just want everybody to come out and be ready to have a good time we're going to talk a lot about stuff anything you want to talk about you know I, I talk a little bit about my life but uh you know i just want people to have fun I'll tell you that everyone has fun at Mad Hatter shows because they almost always break the alcohol sales record for any venue that they're at. Like they are constantly running to the back and pulling out more, more and more and more and more to give to everyone. So there's definitely going to be a party vibe there for sure. If we get done in time, we'll go to the Steak and Shake. (laughs) We'll try to hit Steak and Shake or Cracker Barrel with you while you're up here. So. Um, awesome. I know, uh, two of those nights, I think I'm, I'm the guy running the show here. So I will be, uh, um, I'll be the, the, the producer role there and we'll, uh, we'll try to make you as, uh, welcome as possible okay. when you come to the Midwest. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming yes. tonight, Kevin Farley. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. Good talking to you. Have Thanks. Have a nice evening. All right, right. Diana says kick ass. Yeah, so I hope Diana was... comes out and parties during the show. I haven't been looking at all those. She was, you? she was chatting up a storm over there awesome yeah Yeah, we're still getting used to this whole setup i'm getting used to the start time and we're getting used to the stuff popping up on the screen here but um kind of humbled we haven't ended up on any of the streaming sites yet um we haven't ended (laughs) up like on any of the podcast stuff and still right under twenty thousand views last week so that was amazing hopefully we uh we're getting to a lot of people again today we're just basically spreading out what we're doing here we uh we do music shows we do wrestling shows we do uh, we've had a hypnotist on our shows before. We've had uh, stand-up comedy, improv yeah. comedy, sketch comedy. Like this is, uh, uh, we're filling a, a void of uh, maybe gets overlooked in this area, which straight comedy clubs or alt comedy well, rooms aren't getting. And not even just like the acts, but like the areas that we go to. Or, we, you know, we bring show. You know, uh, he's. I'm willing to bet Kevin Farley's never been in Crawfordsville or Plainfield before. You know what I mean? Like we bring shows. And they like to party and have fun out in Crawfordsville. Not everybody, you know, you know, who only enjoys comedy lives in the city. A lot of times they live, you know, outside and they want to have fun too. And they're a great crowd. I mean, um, at the Donnie Baker show, someone had their baby. (laughs) That was so cute. Brought up that baby a couple times here. Guys, you might think twice about adding Jamie D. Uh, she's baby <laughs> no, fever. This is... It was just so cute. I don't know. <laughs> I had a great time that night. I'm just going to keep looking at you and let you just keep talking and just to get where redder. it gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> that's, that's the story of my life all day, every day. But yeah, Jamie, actually, that's how we met her was uh, she came to watch a show and uh, then we've had her on uh, on a, uh, one of our yeah. smaller events and we've got her on this thing at that sports bar. So I that's keep weaseling my way in here. Yeah, we're going to we're going to get you on one of these bigger shows at some point. So um, this is really cool. So just to kind of recap here, October 29th, we've got a, a free show at that sports bar. Uh, Carlin Haggerty's coming to uh, to us from Ohio. That poor guy is going to have to quarantine when he goes back. I just saw 14 days. He's going to have to. That's an investment for this show he's getting on. But uh, um, we got him on there, and, and uh, he's hosting the show. You're going to be a guest. We may have a couple other guests. And then yeah. DJ Dangler, one of my favorite uh, guys from the Midwest here, uh, um, one of our favorite local comics. You've, uh, you've seen him on Fox. You've heard him on Bob and Tom. He's going to be on that. Um, so Mad Hatter is, is kind of um, – 
offering this uh, this offering to and people it's this, free. Uh, this gift. Just, yeah. You just have to call and make reservations. Is yeah, the way it's I not, understand it, it. There's a there's an outdoor uh, area and there's an indoor and neither of them are gonna probably hold um, you know more than like 60 people. So you there's gonna be you know a cutoff at that point. So depending on what the weather's like is where we'll set up. But uh, you'll want to do that. And then um, if you're intrigued by Drix and you want to see him live. Uh, come out the next weekend. We've got Second Chance. November the 6th, we'll be at the Hobart Art Theater, uh, which is up north um, mm -hmm. towards Chicago. And then we're going to go west, east. We're going to go east. I need to get my, my compass <laughs> in my head uh, to <laughs> Richmond. Uh, and that's the show that Drix is going to be on. Um, yes. So Second Chance, if you haven't uh, ever seen him, uh, look him up on, on YouTube or any of those music uh, se sections there. Pick like six songs at random, and I bet you that like four of them will sound way different than each other. Um, I watched some of them. He had, he has a couple of cute videos with his daughter. At least one I saw. So. Yeah, he's he's got women fans for several <laughs> reasons. Uh, yeah, he's ripped. So yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's a sweet guy, but also the ladies think he's a handsome. You know, super super talented though as well. Uh, can sing, can rap, can do all that stuff. Um, then we've got uh, Donnie Baker Friday the thirteenth in Lafayette. It'll be a great uh, show. Get your tickets. Yeah, he's coming to Carnahan Hall. Uh, they've they've joined the the streaming party here. So if you're you're watching hello. from Carnahan's page, uh, hello. And then November twelfth through the fourteenth, we're gonna have uh, Kevin Farley. That's the the weekend we just talked about. Um, here's one we haven't brought up yet. We're coming back to the Irving Theater the night before Thanksgiving uh, for the very first show that Etta May has done with us. So Etta May at that. the Irving Theater in Indianapolis. I spoke to her a little bit today. Um, she's excited for that night. So a lot of different stuff. The website is madhattershows.com. Yep. And and is where do they when? Where yeah, do they? we just skipped over. We yeah, we, we didn't. We, we did not have talk the smoothest start. We did not have the we, smoothest start on the on the picture there. So. Yeah. Um, all the Mad Hatter Shows gear is actually available yeah. on Teespring. So you can go to any type of search engine and type in Mad Hatter Shows Teespring, T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G. Uh, we've got phone cases on there. We've got hoodies. Tank tops and sweatshirts and... Straight, like yoga pants, like all kinds <laughs> oh, of yeah. stuff. Yeah, like tote bags. Yeah, um, I, there it is. Yes, and I got. I love this sweatshirt. So it, I'm, I'm wearing a large and... A lot uh, of different stuff. And yeah. This is we are we're we're blowing up. We are this fringe <laughs> group of this that's that's becoming cool and entering pop culture and how much conversation can you make at a party when you walk in there wearing your your dad there squad shoes and your mad hatter shows socks. Like this there's a <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that Get can it go all on your there. coffee mug. Go to Teespring, Mad Hatter Shows, go to MadHatterShows.com and, and check out all of our events, get your tickets to the Kevin Farley show and anything else that's going on. Um, and then also check out Drix on all the uh, all the avenues. Um, he's on some chart, he had it on his page the other day and, and, and the page is uh, D-R-I-X. Uh, you can check him out. Um, but yeah, let's let's uh, let's keep supporting him. Let's support all of our, our Mad Hatter yes. stuff here. We're gonna be back in uh, probably two weeks. Is that the thing? Two weeks from now. Um, You'll have to stay tuned to our page to see who the lineup's going to be because that's still pending. But uh, going to be a surprise, but it'll be a good one. It's always good. It's, it's like going to be great. We've set quite the precedent <laughs> here. We've had Reno Collier, we've had Donnie Baker, Drix, and now Kevin Farley. Um, we're just lucky to be able to be a part of that. Yeah. The two of us, also different and just all really great artists, wonderful people. I'd like to point out that my friends list has gone down uh, by about three <laughs> since two weeks ago when yours has gone up 3,000. So <laughs> just about um, you can find me online, too. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I know you're probably going to concentrate on. Jamie, I'm nicer. Neil can be grumpy sometimes. He'll tell you about her kid and his <laughs> a, aversion to ribs. So um, I have to teach him how to eat ribs. <laughs> we ran past the 10 o'clock uh, time limit, so we're probably uh, going to wrap this up here. But uh, thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, to watch us. Uh, I guess you didn't come very far. You were on in front of your computer, but um, tell your friends about us and, and tell them up. about all of the shows here. Um, we've got shows in Tennessee. We've got shows uh, in Indiana. Uh, when the world resumes, we're in like eight different states. So um, this has been a lot of fun for us. Um, this is Jamie D. I'm Neil Snyder, and uh, we'll see you here in two weeks. <laughs>